All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, first of all, let me just say that uh, we got another uh, comment here with the word dude. All right, so just so you know, I that is a rule that I do not allow. Okay, I don't allow that use of the word. All right, but there are a lot of great comments here and I really appreciate these uh, some good stuff here alright so overwatch 7774 says study your Bible and then make a vid four four or five I can't really see Ex explanation points All right, so that's a great comment right there good advice so that's what I did this morning as I do every morning <laughs> I read I read and I study as I'm drinking my coffee and then when I finish my second cup here we are alright okay alright so good job out of overwatch 7774 Ken Smith says we will be able to move with the speed of thought and communication will, will be similar like when God calls your name, angels move with the speed of thought. We are the sons of God and are invited to sit with Christ on his throne. We will move through dimensions and any object. The house of God is, I am guessing, 25,000 miles wide and high. If your home is on the top floor, how will you get to it? It'll be by thought. God says your children are holy, so until you, you children are old enough to decide, he is in the Holy Spirit and will go to heaven until Jesus Christ went into hell and freed the captives. Those who are the righteous went to the bosom of Abraham they didn't go to heaven until Christ set them free. What you are saying is your opinion and is lacking more research to finish with the truth. Okay. All right, so I appreciate that, Ken. So now we got a couple of problems here. Right now we sit on thrones. We that are born of God are kings of God. We are kings. We sit on heavenly thrones, not on earthly thrones. We are not of this world. We are strangers in a strange land. All right, now we will move through dimensions. <laughs> what is that? Is that a joke? I can't even comprehend. What you watch a movie or something, and you imagine what dimensions? Well, well I can't even imagine what that means. You'll have to explain that one to me. I can't even guess what that means. I can't. I can't even guess. Measurable extent of some kind. Dimension. I don't know what that means. <clears throat> All right. Well, and you, what you think we're just gonna be invisible? Okay. Now if you say, I, you know, I'm not gonna argue this stuff. We can move through objects and. All right. We'll go through walls. I'm not going to argue that stuff. I mean, that's. Um, I guess. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, you know, I'm not. Not so much opposed to that idea. I don't even know what dimensions. What this could possibly mean. Uh, move through an object like a wall. Okay. I don't know. Um. 
the house of God is 25,000 miles wide. If your home is on the top floor. All right, so this is uh, absolutely incorrect. We're not going to be living in apartment buildings. That won't happen. We're not going to be crunched into one city like the world has us today. We're going to have our own land, our own home. And we're not going to be working for another man. That's not going to happen. I, I don't know what in the world. Here. You know, sometimes it's hard to imagine what is going on on in the brains of others uh, so what is it? Isaiah 66 or 65 oh I don't know I, I don't know the verse I can't remember nothing I need to study that guy was right I need to study stuff that's not it well, oh wait wait a second was it no No, I know what it was. I know what it was. I remember. I remember. It was something. Let's find it. We're going to find it. It's going to come. It's coming up. There it is. There it is, fellas. There it is. Isaiah 65. Alright, so think about your vision of living in a crowded apartment building with you got neighbors that have 10 dogs and they bark all day long all dog day long they're bark, 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 bark. that's not heaven partner that's not heaven what in the world are you imagining you must be the guy with 10 dogs that's all I can think of that ain't heaven if anything that's hell believe me I know in Isaiah 65 wow. behold I create a new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind and there shall not be an infinite days <laughs> they shall not build and another inhabit all right so if you live in this great big tall apartment building you're the, it's your building you build it they shall not build in another inhabit what you are saying is your opinion and is lacking more research to finish with the truth Man, that's a hell of a statement right there Ken That's all I can say, buddy. That's a hell of a statement. Tell them me that I'm lacking research. And right after you make the statement, if your home is on the top floor, suggest that you're living in an apartment and that somebody lives on the bottom floor does it not is this not suggesting you're gonna live in an apartment building in the life to come hereafter right, so I don't want to get too lean and mean rough and tough but Come on, man. I mean, seriously. If you're gonna, if you're gonna give it, <laughs> you better take it, partner. Because right here, Isaiah 65, verse 22: They shall not build, and another inhabit. In the life to come hereafter, we are gonna have our own land, and we're gonna build whatever we want. We're not gonna have to deal with noisy neighbors and dogs barking and that kind of crap
not going to have to deal with that at all. They shall not plant and another eat. All right, so whatever you plant, you eat. You're not going to have to um, plant so that you can sell and and uh, take advantage of others, gain advantage over others. It's not going to be any. It's not. It's not going to be like the world that we're living in, in that sense, right there. Not even close. All right. Mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. The way that's the way it's meant to be. See, God has given us everything so that we could do it on our own. And we're screwing it up left and right. right. So God's gonna clean house and um, and God knows just exactly how to do that, right? Let your heart, I'm sorry, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Right, so, the... <laughs> In my father's house are many mansions. There, oh, there, there's about, oh, we got about 17, 18 mansions, and we're going to have millions of people bunched into these. No, that's not. There's going to be plenty of room for everybody. In fact, we go to Revelation 21. Think about this. It says, here, just like what we read in Isaiah 65, right? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth, first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now think about that. I mean, if you consider all the land that we have now, and then you, and then add to it all the land where the water is, there's going to be more than enough land for everybody. We're going to have more everything that we could possibly want. All right. And uh, let's see. Was there something else I wanted to share here? You know, I like talking about this stuff. I really do. I, I really appreciate that comment here. Uh, you just got to be careful with these uh, snarky remarks here okay I'm not saying that I've learned everything there is to learn I'm not, not, not saying that at all I've got a lot to learn the more I learn the more I realize the more I have to learn it's great I love it uh, but you know I, I get a little bit fueled up I get a little bit fired up because I do spend a lot of time reading the Bible and studying the Bible and you make some crazy comment like this and then on top of it you say yeah, I gotta do more research okay all right. I'll continue to do the research. I'll continue to study my Bible. All right, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not out to uh, show off, man. I just want the truth, man. Give me the truth. And this stuff, I'm moving through dimensions. What did you do? Read that in a comic book or something? Maybe I am ignorant. You know, I, I'm going to think about this all day long. Really? Moving through dimension. I can't even uh, imagine. What's that? Am I not spelling that right? Uh, see, I just cannot. Can't. I don't know. 
what you're talking about, partner. All right, we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Uh, Pedro, we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's a quote. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. <clears throat> I'm guessing here. You're quoting from something goofy. That's what I... I'm confident. The only thing is, nobody would... You didn't have a space right there that's the only thing so that to me makes me think that you are paraphrasing all right oh, no you maybe you are copying it from the new King James version oh buddy see they got a space right there all right all right so just so you know, Pedro, just so you know, how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this, Pedro? Mi amigo. Let's do it this way. The new King James version is not a new King James Bible, right? La Nueva version King James no es una nueva Biblia King James. La Nueva versión King James no es una nueva Biblia King James. Yeah, that. It's not a new King James Bible at all right so Pedro the whole purpose of the new King James version is to get people away from the King James Bible right no te dejes engañar yeah yeah don't fall for that trick amigo amigo Excuse me, amigo. Don't fall for that trick, partner. All right. Yeah. So, um, that's true, right? So, what? Where, where are we at here? Oh, okay. Let's open this sucker up. We are confident. I say. And willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Right? We are confident, I say, and willing rather and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are manif made manifest in your consciences all right so I'm guessing you know I've heard people talk about uh, this idea that well when you die you go to heaven well it's not found in the Bible anywhere and it's not found there in 2nd Corinthians 
chapter 5 it's not found there anywhere at all it's a beautiful idea you know to think that our loved ones are in heaven watching over us but it's not in the Bible and it's contrary to the Bible as I pointed out yesterday several different places uh, Daniel 12 chapter uh, chapter 12 uh, verse 2 many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to uh -oh, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt alright and we can go to oh uh, you know for <laughs> there's so many places to go to first Thessalonians chapter 4 you think about this that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven do we come down with him or do we rise up to meet him and the answer is we are lifted up into the air we're not already there in heaven we are lifted up so our soul is in the ground it's the only possibility if our soul was in heaven then how in the he double hockey sticks are we rising up into the air to meet the Lord it's nonsensical there's no reason at all to teach this unless you desperately want to teach a false doctrine that people are in heaven today and they're not there's no reason to teach it there's coming a judgment you don't whether you like it or not there's coming a judgment day and that's when we will all stand before God those of us that are saved will be gathered up to meet the Lord in the air whether you like it or not that's gonna happen okay I, I don't understand this idea I don't I really just unless you want to deny or reject the judgment of God that's the only thing I can think of you know if you want to present this idea that the things that are happening now are gonna continue forever it is that what it is because you know what's that say in uh, for is it first Peter 4 or 2 or 4 or 2 or something or somewhere in the Bible it says something I guarantee it it says something in somewhere in the Bible something is said I guarantee it That's not it, fellas. That's not it. Maybe it is it. What do I know? No, that's not it. Oh, I know what it is. Man, how far off was I? I was pretty far off, wasn't I? Well, way off, man. Not even close. Not even close. Right there. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Isn't that what you're saying when you say people are in heaven right now? Everything is just going to, everything is how, is how it was since the beginning. And everything's just going to keep on keeping on forever and ever. It's a process. Good people go to heaven. Bad people go to hell. There is no judgment of God. And things are going to stay the same. 
that I mean that's the idea that's being presented and that's the that I mean since I was a kid I've seen that presentation good people go to heaven bad people go to hell there is no coming judgment day all right that's what it looks like to me when people say oh there's people in heaven today there are people went to heaven even though the Bible clearly says no man has ascended to heaven Jesus says it, it he cannot lie he cannot tell a lie Jesus says no man has ascended to heaven but Reverend Smitty says his mama is in heaven and you know you, you got to be sympathetic for that right that because his mama means a lot to him and you don't want to argue you know we don't you don't know if he's still grieving right but the fact is that she's in the grave you're going to the grave it is appointed unto man once to die and then after this the judgment so again first Thessalonians 4 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven first the dead in Christ shall rise and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them so first the dead in Christ are lifted up the dead in Christ shall rise first Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This idea, this argument, there's no reason at all to make this argument unless you want to deny the judgment of God, which is coming. There is coming a judgment day. It's a great day of the Lord. It's going to be a big deal. And <clears throat> really, we should be hitting this hard so that the unsaved can can more uh, you know be faced with it right because they're gonna be it's coming and so there's no reason at all to keep it to hide it from them the unsaved ought to know that this day is coming it could come today it might come tomorrow it's gonna come and if their opportunity to be saved is right now if they wait it's gonna to be too late why would you teach this idea that people are going to heaven when they die when nobody has ascended to heaven except the Lord Jesus Christ he's the only one and he's coming back for us and when he comes back for us then will we be drawn up into the air to meet him those of us that are saved those of us that are born of God and that'll be too late then for the unsaved and here you are you're teaching them that when they die they go to heaven that's not it's not in the Bible that's not in the Bible anywhere I, I what are you teaching them really where do you think evil comes from question mark let God tell you Isaiah 45 where do you think evil comes from That's a good question. Where are we at here? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Well, I don't think I, he's got it right, except I don't think God has to yell. I bring peace and create evil. Yeah, <laughs> I 
yeah, I don't think God's yelling. At, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Now, call God a liar too. If you're going to have a channel and try to teach people something, why don't you educate your ignorant self? Okay. All right. So I appreciate that. Well said. Call him out in his false doctrines. All right, good job. Good job out of you guys right there. Now, just curious. Just curious. Just, uh, <clears throat> just curious about something here. Yeah, I just I'm just curious about something. Did I say? I what I say that was contrary to this. I mean, if I if I said something that was wrong, quote me on it. Right? Quote me. I can't imagine what uh, what you're thinking contradicts anything that I've taught. You know, I've I've taught that, or I teach that um, Satan, the devil, the dragon, and the serpent um, are uh, spirits. How do I say this? They, they are of the spirit that is absent of God. All right. So, uh, I, I don't know what the problem is. So, you think about, you go back to the beginning. Okay. Go back to the very, very, very beginning. And God created the world in seven and six days and rested on the seventh day right so God created um you know all the creatures right and so God also created the serpent you know, just as God created all the plants and trees God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so God created that tree created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil God created that tree and because God created that tree and because Eve did eat from that tree we now have the knowledge of good and evil so it's, you, you want to blame God that's that's alright but this is the way God has set it up you know God has set it up so since the beginning man has had every opportunity to do it without God and at every opportunity man has failed we can't do anything without God that is evidenced in our life that's been evidenced all throughout history so I, again I don't know what the issue is man I don't know. are you just making stuff up or did I say something that was contrary to this I, I don't get it man There's some sort of disconnect here. All right. There's some sort of disconnect, and I just can't. You have to be specific, man. You have to say, hey, you said this, and that's wrong. You can't just make up stuff.
and then get your body to say amen I mean you can but that's not doing you no good that's not doing me no good it's not doing your body any good either <laughs> I don't mind at all this sort of crit criticism but you have to be more specific if you're going to have a channel and try to teach people something what what is something be exact I, I mean if you're gonna take all all this time to criticize me why not just quote what I said right cuz this is really this is nothing I mean I get it you're trying to make me out to be a uh, liar or a false teacher or what have you I get it but you've got to be specific otherwise I'm gonna assume that you're the liar right so <clears throat> I appreciate that but I have no idea what you might be talking about God should send more whirlwinds to clean America from communist plague and leftist amok runners okay so um, here's the problem Ben Benny Pally alright here's the problem you think uh, think of these uh, leftist as the evildoers well the people on the rightist <laughs> they're the evildoers also they're, they've got you fooled man they've got you fooled you know when I was a kid I used to argue with my mother you know she was a Democrat and I was Republican and I'd say mom all them Democrats they're all liars and she'd say no Jimmy all them Republicans they're all liars well turns out we were both right because they're all liars on the left and on the right you got two sides of the same beast right now I want to share something with you real quickly in the book of Daniel he describes four beasts until the end of the world and he names the first three beasts and the first three beasts are, is the kingdom of Babylon the kingdom of the Medes and Persians and the kingdom of the you know the Greek Empire alright he does not mention the fourth beast he says there's going to be four beasts and then the end of the world's coming and then the fifth kingdom is going to be set up and that's going to be an everlasting kingdom all right so fast forward to the new testament when the greek empire is no longer in power right it's the roman empire at this time so judging from what Daniel has taught us we can conclude that the fourth beast of Daniel is the Roman Empire pretty simple stuff now the problem is uh, there's a lot of problems but the problem is we live in a wicked world and uh, people prefer darkness rather than light they would rather believe a lie than believe the truth and um, there are many deceivers in the world right and because of all this darkness and evilness that goes on in the world there is a falling away and because there's a falling away people there's in other words there's more deception in the world than ever before more people deceived than ever before more people that have fallen away from the truth because of this now the evil one has is gaining in power right when everybody knows he has little power but now that everybody is falling away 
he's gaining in power and of course he can only be somebody of the Roman Empire be, that there's no other possibility unless you want to say Daniel's a liar and I'm gonna say Daniel told the truth and it's gonna play out this way it's playing out this way and uh, those people that teach differently are in darkness now we go to Revelation 17 now the whole book of Revelation is about the beast and that beast is the fourth beast of Daniel and they are all in spirit with the first beast all right make no mistake about that so he talks about four beasts but the fourth beast is in spirit with the first beast all right it's it's the beast or the kingdoms of this world now the great horror of Revelation 17 is called Babylon the Great. Why? Because she is in spirit with the fourth, or I'm the first beast. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is absolutely no doubt about it. The fourth beast of Daniel. All right, and here in verse eight we read, "The beast that was, and is not, and yet is." So people say, well, the, the Roman Empire is no longer in power. Well, consider this. The beast, the Roman Empire, that was and is not. And yet is. Now, how is that? Well you think about it because the we know that the end of the world has not come yet we know that the fourth beast is still in power the fourth beast of Daniel and of course the beast of Revelation has not been thrown into the lake of fire that happens at the end of the world the beast that was the Roman Empire and is not and yet is has to be the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church there's no other possibility it talks about the woman the great whore it's not the bride of Christ but she is pretending to be the bride of Christ isn't she she has adorned herself to look exactly like the bride, but she is not the bride at all. And we go to we go to uh, Matthew twenty four, and Jesus is asked, "What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world?" And what's the first thing he says? He says, "Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name." saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many so these people say that Jesus is Christ and they are deceiving many the great whore that sits upon many waters what's that mean well it tells us doesn't it the waters which thou sawest where the whore sits are peoples multitudes nations and tongues they're all over the world and they're growing I saw somebody the other day claim that the, they have more than one billion followers of the Roman Catholic Church and that's over 15 percent of every that's one in every seven people and I'm, I think it's more than that all these people that are claiming to be Christian 
I don't think they are Christian. I think they're Catholics. Because the Catholic Church has infiltrated and disguised itself so very well that people are now teaching those things from the Roman Catholic Church. Things which they teach. The Bible versions, they all come from Roman Catholic manuscripts. Now, I can go, in, go on and on and on, on about that. But when you read like Revelation 17 or just the book of Revelation and you hear them talk about oh, the beast and worshiping the beast. Here, let's do it this way. They worship the beast. Right? They worship the beast. Not that beast. All right, so let's go. Let's go to this one here. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Right? So they worshiped Satan. They worship Satan, which gives power to the beast. Who is like the beast? All right, and he exercised all the power of the Roman Empire. If you if you see it if you see it, it it it's glaring. It's glaring. It's undeniable. When you see it, man, you see it. The beast of Revelation is the Roman Empire. It's amazing how obvious it is and how incredible how so many people are blind to it. It's, it really is. If any man worship the beast in his image, now think about this. Let's just go with this phrase right here. This word, worship, feeling or expression of reverence. See, that's pretty good. Worship. Uh, the feeling or expression of reverence. You think about, I, I see a lot of people, they have a feeling and, and an expression of reverence for Donald Trump man that guy's gonna he's gonna make America great again well you know the same people that uh, on the other side they they might say the same thing about Barack Obama or whoever's the leader of the left right the feelings and expressions of reverence and, I mean I saw it when Clinton was president and people even still today think oh that's the greatest man ever greatest man ever and well that depends on what your definition of is is right uh, so people become blind when they hate one and love the other and not realizing that they are both uh, in the same vehicle they're being duped and that television is serving to dupe you right so when it says if any man worship the beast and his image the image what is that well it's the image that the political entities present that they're gonna save you and all the everything associated with it you know they'll tell you well we need health care because doctors will save your life and they won't they're lying the government won't save you only Jesus Christ can save you what they present on TV they present it as though it was the gospel truth but they're all liars every single one of them that's why I highly strongly encourage people to stay away from network news stay away from all the news what what do you need to see on TV 
that's going to help you. It's I, I presented this the other day. It's just like soap operas, man. Back in the day, we you'd watch a soap opera and you had you, whatever they presented, you'd have to tune in the next day to to find out. Well, they do the same trick on the network news today. They perfected it. But the soap operas, they figured it out a long time ago. Of course, young people, they can't see that now. They can't see the tricks. They can't see the wizards behind them curtains. The whole world is under this illusion. And this delusion that is utter deception. It's everywhere. All right, so that this is what this is talking about, man. It's talking about what's happening right now. People are blind; they can't see it, but it's right there in front of your eyes. It's incredible. It's amazing. It could not be written more plainly. It could not be more obvious. Yet people are blind. They cannot see the simplicity of it. And that's exactly what the Bible says would happen, and that's what's happening. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Two things to consider here. Um, even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. That means because people are lacking faith, they are not able to see the truth. Nevertheless, when they shall put their faith in the Lord then the veil shall be taken away and their eyes will be opened right and we see many verses regarding this and then of course the other one that I want to share with you is but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ so the Bible is very very simple very easy it's not rocket science man but you have to have faith that's the requirement that's in order to see you must have faith in order for your eyes to be open and your ears to be open so that you can see and that you can hear you have to have faith the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple right? I, you, you can consider me like the simple I'm a big time dummy I've proven that my whole life but the Bible the Word of God can make me wise not because of my own self but because the Bible is full of wisdom it can make the biggest dummies out there wise the Bible can and it can make the the biggest it'll uh, expose the biggest geniuses the smartest the highest IQ people it can expose them as dummies as you know being dumber than dog do because they don't know squat they know all about the stocks and bonds but they don't know nothing about God and what's more important stocks and bonds or the Word of God uh, in the end it's gonna play out the Word of God far exceeds temporary pocket change right all right so I appreciate these comments right there and so Benny I'm, I'm gonna encourage you man stay away from politics turn off that TV man really I don't remember listen what that? that is what the millennium which is a thousand years is for we can take a thousand years to kill unsafe people what are you talking about everyone will be in spiritual bodies which means no one sick mentally ill that's not what Revelation 20 says at all it says people are gonna be getting their heads cut off And the teaching of dis of discipline will be going on. 
Huh? Like training camp or something? Then after the millennium, Satan will be released from the bottomless pit. And whoever decides to follow Satan will be cast in the lake of fire along with Satan, which is the death of the soul, blotted out, gone forever. Okay, so I don't know what religion you're teaching, but this is not even from the Bible. All right, because when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world, and our enemy will be gathered at our feet and destroyed forever. The wrath of God is poured upon them. It's judgment day. It's the great day of the Lord. And then shall be brought to pass the thing that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so you cannot have a thousand years beyond that. Yeah, well, furthermore, you cannot have unsaved people living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. That's not what the Bible is crystal clear about this. When Jesus comes, it's judgment day, and the unsaved are destroyed forever. You cannot have them living beyond the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what, no matter how loud you yell it, it ain't going to change the truth. All right, so I appreciate that comment, Johnny. I do. But you cannot change the truth. The truth is not subjective. It is an absolute object. It cannot be changed. Alright. Alright, so I appreciate that. Now, of course, I've gone over all of that. Uh, anybody have any question on Revelation 20? I look I'll I love walking through it cuz it's so simple. Uh and it lines up with everything that we've read in the Bible. You know, for example, blessed and holy, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Well, Jesus is the resurrection. He even plainly says, "I am the resurrection." Yeah, you got so many bozos out there scratching their head and armpits and thinking, well, I don't know what the first resurrection is. Well, what about the second resurrection? Well, let's think about the third reps resurrection. No, 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 no. Fool. 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 There's one resurrection. And it's Jesus Christ. And when he returns, we will follow him. He has led the way. He is our resurrection. Alright, so study your Bible and then make a vid. I appreciate that, man. appreciate that very much. I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that. I think I'll study the Bible and then I'll make a vid. I love reading the Bible. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. this was going to be I thought this was some sort of Bible study I thought maybe I could learn from you bud I thought maybe you could teach me some uh, something about arguing about smoking dope well I'll tell you the one thing I'm not at all opposed to people smoking dope. They do what you want. You wanna, you wanna, you know, do heroin and all that sort of stuff. I don't care. That's your choice. That's not my choice to make. And I would, I think it would be better for you to 
shoot heroin into your veins than it is to go to a doctor and get the pills that they give you. And I'm serious about that. Now, obviously I'm going to encourage you all to be sober and be vigilant all the time, right? But that's your choice. I'm not going to frown on anybody because I can't, you know, nobody knows the kind of pain that each individual goes through. Each individual has to be their own doctor, really. But I will say that, you know, back in the day I used to smoke more pot or I used to smoke more weed than Cheech and Chong combined. I'm a big time dope smoker. Big time. Well, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but uh, I did smoke a lot of weed. And I can tell you beyond any doubt, man, you can smell that stuff. I mean, it stinks. When you, when you smoke it, you can't tell so much. But when somebody else is smoking it, man, it stinks. I mean, it'll, it's terrible, man. It's overwhelming. It's obvious. I mean, it'll stick to you. You go to the supermarket, and people at the supermarket not only can look into your eyes and tell that you've been smoking dope, they can smell it on you. It's overwhelming. And so these guys are fighting about smoking weed. And, you know, why not just get along and say, I'm sorry, lady. And maybe that's what he's saying. I don't know. But, you know, some people, they like to get the red at, you know, the red butt. They like to, to get fired up. So it's good for people to get angry once in a while, get fired up, you know, once in a while. Some people, they, they love, they live for it. Some people. This is living life right here for some people. It's exciting to get mad about something. You know, people love drama. You know, back in my day, back when I was a kid, you watch soap operas for drama. Right? I just worry about, you know, I just go out and have fun, enjoy life. But well, people nowadays, they don't want to have fun, they want drama. Well, that's, yeah, I think that's because they don't play the soap operas they used to. They don't have a soap opera to watch. They don't have all that drama on TV. You know, what's going to happen with Nikki and Sally and Joe and all these, you know, they don't have this drama on TV. So now they got to have drama in their own life. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But I do appreciate that comment. That's good advice. Study your Bible and then make a vid. I would, uh, in turn, give that advice to you, my friend. Study your Bible and then make a vid.